we have, that have, has been debated in Parliament today and that is now getting broader and broader support. I'd like to acknowledge the work that Dave Shoebridge from the Greens, Ryan Park and Anna Watson and Adam Searle from Labor, Paul Green and Fred Knoll from the Christian Democrats and our friends from the Shooters and Fishers Party for doing what I think Ryan mentioned earlier about putting this issue above party politics. The idea that the taxpayers' money of the people of New South Wales can actually support our critical industries like our steel industries is that much closer because of that collaboration, that concern and that principle and the intellect that I think has been displayed here. I do not begrudge the government the opportunity to debate this further. In fact, we welcome it. We welcome the debate and the concern about our steel industry and about getting this right. But as I understand it, in a couple of weeks' time or a few weeks' time when this is next debated, there will be a vote. And on the basis of the indications that we have today, we may well be looking at a very historic vote for one of the most significant changes and protections for Australian manufacturing in decades. And for that, I want to thank all of our parliamentary friends on behalf of the union movement and the people of the Illawarra who have been craving for this moment and waiting for it for a very, very long time. I will now leave to others to add and supplement and apologise in advance as I have uh, Well, this is an historic day. We don't see this as a Greens bill, we see this as a community bill with cross-party support. And it's one of those times, pretty rare in politics, where we've put our party affiliations behind us. We've signed up to a common sense bill to protect the, the New South Wales and the Australian steel industry. Steel industry protection is the surest way of securing the jobs in the Illawarra, but also making sure that we have long-term investment in the steel industry because we know it's got the highest labour standards, we know it can have the highest environmental standards, and with long-term investment, it can have the smallest carbon footprint of any steel industry on the planet. That's the future for Australian steel. Quality jobs, protecting the environment, and protecting our economy. And um, you guys can talk first than the last Today is a historic day, and I want to uh, thank uh, my colleague, Adam Searle, my Labor Party colleagues uh, in the Illawarra, and of course, uh, my parliamentary friends from the Greens, the Christian Democrats, uh, the Shooters and the Fishers, for getting behind this very important bill. I said a few days ago that this has to be above party politics. There are 10,000 residents in the Illawarra who would lose their employment if the steelworks were shut down. They expect members of this place, members who they elect, to stand up for their job. What I'm saying to Mike Baird is very simple. Think about 10,000 workers' jobs, not just your own. Stop the rhetoric in there, join with the other members of parliament and make sure that going forward, we have a strong, viable and robust steel producing capability in this country and we support the 10,000 or so jobs that hang off that based not only in the Illawarra, but right across New South Wales. Right, when this bill comes to the lower house, legislation. This is above politics. Gareth Ward and Lee Evans and Shelley Hancock have a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks to make a decision. Lay be on the side of 10,000 employees and their families, or will they be on the side of foreign steel producing countries? I'll tell you whose side I'm going to be on. I'm going to be on the men and women who elect me to this place to stand up for their jobs, to stand up for their families and to stand up for a strong and robust steel industry into the future. Um, and 0.2% additional cost on infrastructure in New South Wales is what we're talking about here. Out of a $17 billion infrastructure project, we're talking an additional $34 million to make this policy a reality. 
And when you realize that there are hundreds of millions of dollars of additional economic growth in their community by using Australian steel, this makes rational economic sense as much as it makes social and environmental sense. And let me say this, um, if the steelworks in the Illawarra collapsed and we had unemployment rise to around 17%, which is what independent analysis would predict, I can assure you the cost to the state government would be enormous. Um, so let's be very, very clear about this. If anyone can argue the economics that it would be smarter to see a large regional city on its knees and the subsequent payments, assistance, welfare packaging, loss social security support, loss of tax, loss of income for the government, that makes up when they're reading a different economics textbook than I agree. And let alone the social thing. And can I say this is this is not just pie in the sky stuff. We've lost uh